If you're buying a PC for video editing, then there's a few key things you need to keep in mind to really maximize your video editing performance. In this video, we'll step through the key features, the specs and components to consider if you wanna maximize the performance for your next video editing PC. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help entrepreneurs and business owners amplify their business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. Let's jump into it. Now there's a lot of options out there when it comes to PC parts and components and a massive range of features to choose from. If you're building or buying a PC for video editing, then there are some key decisions that can make a big difference to your overall editing performance and workflow. Recently, it was time for us to upgrade our main video editing PC. So we thought it'd be a great time to run through the key things anyone else in the same boat should consider when deciding what to get. Now, fortunately for us, right as we were looking at upgrading, one of my favorite PC and component manufacturers, MSI, reached out to us and offered to send us a pretty awesome new system. Now, I actually used to work in a computer shop building gaming PCs, and they were always one of my go-to manufacturers for solid quality and always having a big focus on performance. So I was pretty pumped when they reached out. So here is what they sent us. And we'll be using this as a guide to step you through the key decisions when deciding what systems and parts you should use when you're buying your own system. So before we jump in, I do want to be completely clear that this PC and all of its components were provided by MSI at no cost to us. So technically, this is a sponsored video. As always though, before we agreed to accepting it, we provided them with our standard terms. It sounds great, but we'll only ever present our full, unfiltered, unbiased opinions, both good and bad. So not only did they agree, they insisted we go all out with our thoughts on the good, the bad, the awesome and the ugly, and we'd have it no other way. I will give you a full rundown on this system and how it performs in another video, which will be out really soon, but now on to the good stuff. When it comes to computers, video editing is actually a fairly unique workflow. Not only is editing incredibly intensive on most aspects of a computer, the software that you use and the combination of parts that you choose can make a big difference to your end performance and the efficiency of your workflow. So there's five key things to consider. The first one is RAM. Now RAM plays a huge role in the overall power and the performance of your system. It is definitely a case of the more the merrier when it comes to RAM. So having extra RAM in your system won't just help with the render times and export times of your video projects. It'll also help with how smooth and how seamless everything plays back while you're actually editing. Having extra RAM in your system will also help you keep that performance if you've got multiple applications running at the same time. So an example would be you might be editing in Adobe Premiere, but you also might wanna open up Adobe After Effects to fix up some animations or to edit titles, effects, or motion graphics, or maybe you've got Adobe Photoshop open as well so you can fix up some of your graphics. Having these applications open at the same time takes up a heap of system resources and choose through your RAM. So having additional RAM is going to make that process much more seamless and give you the power to be able to actually do it and do it well. Now it's also important to note that it's not just about the amount of RAM that you've got. RAM actually comes in different speeds. It's also important to look at the speed of the RAM that you're buying and to try and get the fastest RAM possible as well. So my MacBook Pro is currently maxed out at 16 gig, and this new system here currently has 32 gig of DDR4 RAM in it. Now I might even upgrade this to 64 gig sometime soon to get a bit more performance, again, with multiple applications running. One cool thing about the RAM and the motherboard that MSI sent us is that this system supports DDR4 boost technology. So what that does is it helps you get the maximum performance out of your RAM while it's talking to your CPU without any interference from any of the other components on your motherboard, but it also helps with the stability of the RAM and the overall system as well. So what I'd recommend when it comes to RAM if you're on a budget is to still try and get at least 16 gig of RAM in your system and to try and get the fastest RAM that you can on your budget. If you've got a bigger budget, then I definitely recommend to get at least 32 gig of RAM in your system and again, the fastest RAM that you can afford as well. Number two is storage. Now when it comes to storage and setting everything up for your video editing systems, there's a heap of different options out there. You've got things like SSDs, hard drives, you've got RAID setups, you've got external drives as well. So there's a heap of different options. But what I would recommend is that you set up a multi-drive system. So that's where your computer is gonna have at least two drives in it. One of them will be a high-speed drive and the other one will be a much larger drive to hold all of your video files. 
And we recently did a video covering off on all the different hard drive options for video editing and what we recommend and what we use. And I will link that up in the cards now. But essentially the high speed drives, the SSDs will be a lot more expensive, but they won't have the capacity, the storage capacity that the larger, cheaper hard drives have. So what I would recommend is to get at least one SSD drive in your system, something that you're gonna install your operating system on, your applications on, so that all of that loads fast and that your system is going to run fast. And then you can get at least one regular hard drive to save all of your video files on. Now, if you've got the budget, you could also consider adding a second SSD drive for added performance. So you could use that second drive as your working drive. So all the files and everything that you're using on your current project, you could copy over to that drive and work from that. And the speed and the performance that you'll have working from that drive will be much, much faster than working off a spinning disk or, or a regular hard drive. Number three is the CPU. Now this is essentially the brain of your computer and it plays a huge role in the performance on your video editing system. But before you look at the CPUs, you also should look at your video editing software to see what the software will actually utilize inside of the different CPUs. Because when you're looking at the CPUs, you've got things like cores, there'll be different cores. You can get a four core, six core, eight core, 12 core, CPUs, and you've also got a clock speed or the actual speed that that processor will run at. And the impact of those two things on your video editing will really be determined by what video editing software you're using. So whether the software that you're using will support having multiple cores, having eight core processor, whether it's gonna use that or whether it's only gonna be based off the clock speed of the processor itself. Now there's two main manufacturers of CPUs. You've got AMD and you've got Intel. Now without jumping into all the nitty gritty there, AMD's just released a new Ryzen CPU, which offers incredible performance for gaming. But when it comes to video editing, there's really been mixed reviews out there. As far as I'm concerned, Intel has the edge for video editing, at least right now, but I definitely wouldn't discount what AMD is up to. So your CPU is definitely a critical piece of the puzzle here. And what I'd suggest is that you spend a decent chunk of your budget in this area. I'd also recommend targeting a higher clock speed to so a faster processor over a processor with more cores. And as you spend more money on your processors, you'll actually increase both. If you're on a low budget, then something like the Intel Core i3 range of CPUs or Core i5 range will be the place to start. Or if you've got the budget, then definitely check out the Intel Core i7 range. We're currently using the Intel Core i7 8700K, which is a six core CPU clocked at 3.7 gigahertz. Number four is your video card. Now this plays a massive part in video editing, but surprisingly a lot of people disregard it and will focus more on CPU. Now the CPU and your GPU or your video card definitely go hand in hand, but they actually do different things and solve different problems when it comes to high end video editing. So what you'll find in a lot of the video editing applications around these days is that if you're using a compatible GPU that a lot of the processor intensive tasks like rendering effects and color corrections and things are all offloaded instead of sending them to the CPU, they're offloaded to your GPU. So it's a much faster way of processing those effects and rendering those out, which in turn speeds up your whole editing process. But it definitely comes down to which video editing software you're using as to how much is offloaded from your CPU to your GPU to speed everything up. In some cases like Adobe Premiere, everything is CPU until you use a GPU enabled effect. In other cases, almost everything can be offloaded to your GPU, speeding up things massively. Now, just the same as with the CPUs, we've got two main manufacturers of GPUs as well. You've got the choice of an NVIDIA GPU or an AMD GPU. Now, there are some pros and cons of each and some video editing software is more optimized, once again, for one brand over the other. So it's definitely worth once again, looking at your video editing software and checking out what the recommended hardware is to get the most out of that piece of software. So either AMD and OpenCL or Nvidia and CUDA. Now you definitely don't need to run out and get the best top of the line GPU out right now. What I would recommend is getting at least a mid range video card that's going to give you still a big performance boost and you can invest the rest of your budget on maxing out your CPU or RAM. The other thing to be aware of when you're purchasing a GPU is that they also come in different sizes. So the amount of video RAM that is included with your video card. So you could get a video card with two gig, four gig, 
eight gig of video RAM on the actual video card itself. Now in regards to video editing and performance, you don't need to have the latest and greatest and you definitely don't need to have eight gig of RAM two gig will probably be fine because it doesn't actually make a huge difference in all of our tests. So for us, MSI sent us out an NVIDIA GTX 1080 video card. This thing has eight gig of video RAM built in and it absolutely chews through our renders in Adobe Premiere Pro. But one thing to note is that even with this beast of a video card in there, we're only hitting it around 60 to 70% GPU usage. So nowhere near 100% usage on our exports. So that just shows you that while the video card plays a big role, you could definitely get away with a lower spec video card at least least for Adobe Premiere because that's just how it works and you can spend your leftover money on increasing your CPU power or maxing out your RAM. But I gotta tell you I definitely get excited when I hit the render button on this system because it is that quick. And number five is your motherboard and this is another critical element of your video editing system that most people overlook. It's essentially the glue that holds your entire system together and a lot of the cool features that, that we've been mentioning all rely on the motherboard. To be able to have fast hard drives to plug those in, you need to have a decent motherboard with those high speed connections. To be able to have 32 or 64 gig of RAM, you need to have a decent motherboard that will support all of that. So when you're selecting your motherboard, there's a couple of things that you wanna consider. The first of them is the upgrade ability. So does this have a clear upgrade path or can you easily upgrade the processor? Can you easily upgrade the RAM to add more down the track when you looking at upgrading. And the other is flexibility. Does this board give you everything you need, like enough USB ports, enough high-speed ports like USB-C or Thunderbolt to be able to satisfy your needs now, but also into the future as well? Because the slowest part of any video editing system or any system in general is wherever the bottleneck is. So by having a fast hard drive, by having a, a lot of RAM, by having a decent video card, you're removing bottlenecks, but you need to remove bottlenecks on your motherboard as well to make sure you've got enough ports to plug things in or to have enough high speed ports so that you're not limiting the performance on your devices because they're plugged into a port that isn't fast enough to run them. So look at the flexibility of your motherboard as well when you're purchasing to make sure that it does everything you're after now, but also potentially into the future as well. And obviously technology is changing fast, but do the best you can. So with all of that sorted, there's two extra things that I'd also suggest you pay close attention to that can add a lot of value over time. The first one is your case. So think about where you're actually gonna be storing your computer and make sure that you've got ports that are easily accessible. So a lot of cases these days will give you the ability to have USB ports on the front or headphone jack plug on the front. If all of that is gonna help with your workflow, then consider those while you're making your case selection. Also look at the size of the case and make sure that there's enough room inside to fit everything that you currently want in there, but also potentially adding additional things in like extra hard drives down the track. And I'd also suggest that you find something that matches the volume level that you're looking for as well. Some of these cases are crazy loud with the amount of fans and everything in them. The one that we've got is almost silent, so it's amazing. But if volume and noise is a thing, obviously I'm filming in this room, the computer's sitting right here, we don't wanna be able to hear it. So that's a big part that a lot of people dismiss as well. So make sure that the volume level of the case and how quiet or noisy it is, is going to fit what you're after and it's also a good idea to find out how easy it is to make changes to things inside your case once the system is built because some cases will have everything locked down and you may need to remove a heap of components to be able to add something simple like an additional hard drive into the case so it could be a heap of work versus some of the other cases where it would just be sliding the thing in and it's good to go so definitely another thing worth considering. So keep all this in mind when you're deciding what to buy for your next video editing PC build or if you're planning on purchasing a pre-built machine. And for those of you interested in exactly what we're running in this PC, I'll put a link on screen to a separate video with a review of the system as soon as we've finished it, including all the benchmarks and results in different editing software as well. For now, I've included a breakdown of all the components in the description below, but that video will take a look at everything in more depth. I'll see you soon.